Welcome back. U.S. National Institutes of Health scientists played a major role in developing the Moderna vaccine, but they're not getting credit. A New York Times is reporting that Moderna excluded three NIH scientists as co-inventors of a central patent for the company's multi-billion dollar COVID-19 vaccine in its application. And here to discuss the details is Zane Risby, Research Director at Public Citizen, along with oh, finances, Anjali Kemlani. And Zane, let me just begin. Can you outline the situation with here? We know of the Pfizer vaccine as the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine. Should, be the, should there be another name attached to the Moderna vaccine? Yeah, so we know from the beginning of the pandemic that Moderna did not uh, work on this vaccine alone. It was supported uh, in large part by the National Institutes of Health, among other U.S. government agencies. So right from the beginning of the pandemic, the NIH called it the NIH Moderna vaccine. The U.S. government, for example, helped invent the vaccine, develop the vaccine, run the clinical trials, um, and even paid for some of the manufacturing. And so most recently, uh, it turns out, we were digging through Moderna's patent filings and we found that the US government actually asked Moderna to be named on a key patent application. And this patent application, uh, Moderna decided it invented by itself. So Zane, let's let's dig into that. Of course, we know that we've been hearing about this issue since last June, really, when the question started coming up about the uh, the NIH's input. We're going to get back to specifically this situation for a second, but broadly speaking, is this any different than typically when the government does fund research that pharma companies then take off into commercialization? It is part of a larger trend in which the public sector, of course, contributes to a lot of pharmaceutical development. But what makes this uh, situation particularly unique is the fact that the National Institutes of Health actually had scientists working hand in hand with Moderna. Um, and so there is really a federal intellectual contribution as well as a financial contribution uh, for this vaccine. So and let me ask you talk- about the, uh, go ahead, Anjali, sorry. No worries. Thanks, Jared. Um, So then let's go back to to, uh, NIH and Moderna and just what specifically here uh, is the solution and what what is its relevance as we talk about? I know that part of this issue uh, is global vaccine equity. What is the significance here that we're looking at in order to resolve this for the U.S.? Look, there's many layers to this issue, but I think one of the most important factors here is that right now Moderna has unilateral authority over how the vaccine is priced, how it's produced, where it's produced, how it's produced, and uh, effectively who can get access. And so if the US were named as a co-inventor and then uh, it would create a a presumption of co-ownership. And this is of course just one patent application, there are multiple patent applications, but what it really gets to is about US control, about uh, the idea that Moderna alone cannot exclusively control decisions about some of this vaccine technology. So is this really about these political considerations? It seems to be political to me. I'm just also wondering, is there any potential financial fallout? Could there be, I, I don't know, fees, back penalties, I don't know, some kind of dues owed to Moderna, or excuse me, owed by Moderna to the NIH um, in this instance? Look, it's it's a political story, it's a financial story, it's a legal story, and it's a confusing mix of all three. So I would say in terms of the financial situation, um, if the U.S. government had this patent, then the U.S. government could license this patent out Uh, unilaterally. It would not need to ask Moderna for permission. And so you can imagine some royalties on that end. Um, There is separately an ongoing dispute between the U.S. government and Moderna over another patent that uh, that Moderna has yet to license from the U.S. government. This is the 2P patent, the 070 patent, about a particular piece of the vaccine technology. Um, And then finally, there is potentially Uh, uh, some legal issues here as well in terms of the NIH could conceivably um, ask a court um, to, uh, you know, adjudicate on this dispute and whether uh, the U.S. government should be named on this patent application. It looks like, Zane, looking at how this has, uh, you know, really taken the time, we've heard uh, some pretty strong language from NIH director, Dr. Francis Collins, only really recently. Um, But it seems like they might be at least entertaining the idea of going to court. Do we have any idea based on history what the likelihood of that is and, and whether or not the courts might get involved here? 
You know, it is pretty notable that Francis Collins put out a pretty strong statement recently saying that he considered it a serious mistake that NIH scientists were not named on a key patent application. Um, and he did reference some uh, legal authorities, but then the NIH clarified that by legal authorities, he meant government patent lawyers. Um, in the past, the U.S. government has uh, taken some companies to court over some of these issues. Um, the closest historical analogy is about a different patent situation. It wasn't an inventorship issue, uh, but the U.S. government uh, is currently in court with Gilead uh, for Gilead's use of uh, a CDC patent over PrEP, uh, the HIV medicine. Right. So let's uh, let's talk about the vaccines again. Broadly speaking, I know that if you take a look at all the different ones that the U.S. has authorized, uh, Johnson and Johnson has agreed to provide doses. We just learned to conflict zones. We know that Pfizer and uh, and BioNTech have uh, been fighting the idea of sharing their technology, except for to those partners that they deem viable, like they did in South Africa. So similarly, we've seen that while Moderna did voluntarily agree to not enforce. Uh, its patent early on, uh, they are still putting up this fight right now for this. I think there's a theme here where we're seeing sort of these vaccine companies look to keeping some level of control on the, the products themselves. Uh, do you see this as any different uh, to, say, the Pfizer issue? They're related, but I would say that Moderna stands out for some of the choices the company has made. Look, there's only one company right now, uh, you know, that has U.S. FDA authorization that is selling a that is reportedly selling a vaccine to a sub-Saharan African state for $29 per dose, and that is Moderna. And this is the, despite the fact that U.S. taxpayers have given nearly $10 billion in purchase commitments, in R&D money, in manufacturing money. So you have this kind of paradox where the company that has taken the most public support has acted uh, least consistently with the public interest. And now we're seeing the Biden administration expressing frustration with Moderna for not uh, supplying enough vaccines to low and middle income countries. Uh, we need the pandemic to end. And so that means vaccinating the world. Uh, if we want the economy to, to restart, if we want uh, the, the threats of variants to go down, if we want to get life back to normal, uh, then these companies have to step up. And if they don't, then the Biden administration has to step up and require the companies uh, to, to really help vaccinate the world. And we're going to leave it there. Zane Rizvi, Research Director at Public Citizen, along with Yahoo Finance's Anjali Kamlani.